Hello everyone. I am here with my freshly rebatteried lights to do the citations lecture. Um, this is relevant for several courses and is basically going to be an overview on what a citation is, how it works, and what it looks like, um, as well as why we use them. So I will share my screen with you um, and I've got a PowerPoint to lead us through. Um, so let's do this. All right, you can see my screen here. You can see my PowerPoint slides. I am just gonna go into presentation mode um, so that we can look at it together. It's loading. <laughs> Alrighty, here we are. So citations, what is a citation? That's our first question. A citation is a reference. So to cite something is to refer to its source, okay? So referring to the source. And it, the citation also includes the most basic information about that source. So who wrote it, what's it called, when was it made and where is it located? Either where was it published, if it's a physical item, or what is the URL if it's online? A reference is used to show the reader where to look for further information um, and also to like back up your claims, right? To support those claims and uh, show that you're not just making things up and then people can go and see um, and check where you got those facts from and um, learn more. So citations can be done in several styles. Um, a citation style is just a formula basically um, for citing. So it'll have the basic elements, name of the author, title, date, those sorts of things. And they'll be laid out in a particular order with certain punctuation and stuff like that. The different styles differ depending on the discipline that you're in and they highlight different information as most relevant to their um, field of study. So for instance, MLA, which is um, the literary style, okay, um, is used for fine arts and for criticism, um, uh, like arts criticism. And um, if you were writing an English essay, you'd probably be using MLA. And MLA prioritizes the author's name and the page numbers, um, or even the line numbers, if you're looking at poetry or something like that. Whereas let's say the humanities ones, they tend to prioritize the date that something was published. So the date that that research was completed because it updates more. Obviously, if you're writing about um, a classic novel, that novel isn't changing, right? So um, you can continue to refer to it and refer to people's work on that piece um, without expecting there to be much of a difference in information. But if you're in something like history, or psychology, then there is gonna be updates in that field all the time. So putting the date in is really important. The style that we use at VAC, uh, Vancouver Career College is called APA, and we will go over that um, in more detail later in this slideshow. So let's look at some examples. You're not gonna to need to know how to do all the different formats. Um, that's not necessary at all. We're gonna focus on APA, but I just wanted to show you a couple different styles and the differences between them. So first of all, you'll notice they're pretty similar to each other, right? And they do all include those basic pieces of information. Um, so let's have a look at how they differ. So the first piece of information that we need to see is our author, okay? And the author always goes first. I don't know of any citation styles where the author does not go first. And it, you always transpose the author's name as well. So we're um, doing it under their surname or their last name. Um, if you are in office skills, you will recognize uh, transposing people's names from the standardized filing rules. So you reverse their name, last name first, and that's what you would alphabetize your overall list by. Depending on the style, if there's multiple authors, you'll either list out all of them, like you can see is done in Harvard and Vancouver here, 
Um, for MLA, we just say et al, which means and others and the group, okay, it's Latin. Um, and you can also see that I've got the first name of the author. And this is because typically in MLA, we're talking about art pieces where there is kind of one main author um, and we wanna know their full name. When you're doing things like research, um, then we wanna know everybody who is involved and um, typically we just shorten it to an initial. So different ones, some of them have a first name, some of them have initials. You can also see in the Harvard one, there's dots behind the initial, whereas in the Vancouver one, there isn't. Um, so some, some minor differences. Next, you have to include your title, okay? And so usually that goes after the author. You'll see in the Harvard one, we have a date in between our name and our author, or sorry, our author and our title. Um, whereas in the other two styles, it goes directly into um, the title. Titles are always going to be italicized if it is a full length work. Okay, so this is the same as in standard grammar. If you have a book or a movie or a magazine, a full piece of work, then you're going to italicize that title. So put it sideways. Okay. If it is a smaller piece, then it doesn't get italicized. And depending on the style, you either follow standard grammar, which is to put quotation marks around it, or you just write it standardly. Um, We'll see an example of this later on in the show. Um, but uh, essentially, if it's a full piece, italicize. If it's a part of that piece, then you don't italicize. For example, a chapter inside a book, the chapter would be regular, the book would be italicized. Um, a poem inside a collection, the poem would be regular um, or quotes around it and the uh, poetry collection would be italicized. If you've got an article in a magazine, same idea, okay? So publication date is the next one. And again, look, there's a couple different ways to do this. So um, on the MLA, we've just got it at the end, okay? For Harvard, we have it further up because this is more often used in humanities. Um, so, that's moved up <laughs> and it's in brackets. Um, whereas down here we have it again at the end with a semicolon instead of a comma. So again, just minor differences per style. Finally, the last important piece of information is the publication location and the link if it's available. Um, so here is a couple interesting things to note. First of all, in the MLA, we have to say available from and then we put the online information. Um, so it's available from Vital Source, which is the app, right? Um, and then we have the fact that it's the 10th edition. Um, and then you've got the publisher, okay? Whereas in Harvard, it says insert publisher location. This would be if you have a physical copy, you would write down the location, the physical location of where it was printed. Um, and if it's online, that's where you would stick the URL. Um, same with this one, they have the same option. So you'd put the URL there, or you would put the name of the physical location, depending on uh, what you're doing and um, what you're looking at. So um, a quick tip for this is that to find your copyright information in a physical copy of a book, um, it's on what's called the Verso page. This is the page immediately after your table of contents. I'm just going to grab a book from beside me. Uh, this is a textbook, as you can see. Um, so your front page has your title and usually your authors on it as well. Then you have your first title page, your full title page, which will have the copyright at the bottom. And then this is your verso, okay? This one here. So your verso has all your copyright information on it. So if I just look through this quickly, I can do one of these citations. So I can say, okay, I see the date, it's copyright 2001. I can see the publishing house is called Grey Wolf Press. I can see that it was published in Minnesota. Um, and of course I know the name of it because I've got the title on the title page and the cover of the book. Um, and I have the authors. So I could easily take this and I'd go, okay, my authors are Kate Sontag and David Graham. So that would be Sontag comma K uh, at all or Sontag comma K uh, Graham comma uh, or sorry, comma, Graham, comma, David. <laughs> uh, 
And then I would have my uh, date, 2001. And then I have my title, which is after confession, colon, poetry is autobiography. And then I would have um, the location. And so I would say Gray Wolf Press um, is my publisher and my location was Minnesota. So I would easily find those items and then just plug it into the formula depending on the style that I'm using. If you're online, um, you may have to look a little harder for this information, unless it is an article or something that has the publication information just right at the top there. Okay, other items to include in your citation. So um, as I mentioned, chapter or article name, if it's a, in a larger work. So again, if I use this uh, book as an example, this book has a bunch of essays in it and is um, then edited by these people, okay? So technically they aren't the authors, they are the editors. And if I wanted to uh, reference only one of the chapters, let's say I wanted to reference um, the autobiographical I. <laughs> and so I wanna reference that one. So I would be looking for the title of that individual work, which is right here above uh, title and then author, right? So my individual work is called The Autobiographical Eye, an Archive of Metaphor, Imagery, and Innuendo. And then I would still have the title of the main book. And I would also, I would put it underneath the writer of the article. So that's uh, Kumunyaka Yusef, Kumunyaka comma Yusef. <laughs> so again, you can find the little pieces pretty easily. If it's an edition, so if it's been published more than once, if it's a magazine or a periodical, or if it is a textbook and it's published, you know, been multiple editions, such as the Office Skills textbook I was using as my example on the previous slide, um, then you need to include that edition. So if it's the first edition, you can just leave it. But if it is a second edition, third, fourth, fifth, onwards and onwards, um, you will want to put which edition it is just so that people are, are clear. Um, page numbers. <sighs> Excuse me. Um, so if you're referring to something specific or if you're quoting, then you usually are asked for a page number. Um, if you're looking at just like a small section of a book instead of the full book or something like that, again, you want to put pages. So if you have a page range, you put PP and then put both uh, the range. If you just have a single page, you just put a singular P for page. Okay. And then I've got my example. Again, this is the APA layout for the um, textbook from the previous slide. And you can see I've inserted uh, the title of the chapter, I've highlighted the 10th edition, and I've also put in the chapter page range. You can also include a couple other things. So the type of media, if it is not just a written piece, if you don't read it, so if you watch it, if you look at it, if you listen to it, um, anything like that, then you'll write out what type of media it is. This is usually included in brackets somewhere um, and the role of the creator. So if they're not a writer or an author, maybe they're an editor, a host, a um, illustrator, whatever it is, you'll put that in brackets um, and collaborators if applicable. So let's say you have an article, you're gonna cite both the article and the editors, um, the article author and the editors, those will both be included. Um, perhaps if you're citing a movie, you would list out the director and the writer um, and include both of those. So you would uh, indicate which one is which. Um, I'm not really going to be asking for that. Um, but if you are doing a research uh, assignment for me and you are looking at non-written material and you're not sure how to do it, I've got tons of examples on the citation page and you can always just come to me and uh, look at the citation together um, and we'll make sure that you've got all the info you need. Okay, so why do we cite our sources? What's the point? Why are we talking about this? So the purpose of citing sources is twofold. The first is to for your own benefit, right? As the writer of this new piece of research, um, it is to provide evidence for what you're saying to back you up, right? So to make your argument stronger and supported and also to prove that other people agree with you and that you know the material. So, I mean, typically in a research piece, you want to reference um, work that disagrees with you, work that agrees with you, the work that influenced you um, and further reading and things. So there's tons of different types of citations and purposes, but all of them are there to strengthen your own work and to provide evidence 
that you are telling the truth um, and that you're not making these things up um, and to show people where you got that source so that they can go and say, well, actually, you know, I don't think this is a very good source. Or maybe they look at it and they say, I think you've interpreted the source well, or I think you've interpreted the source poorly. Um, so you provide where you got that source so that people can check your argument. The more radical or strong or controversial your claim is, the more likely you require a citation for it. So for instance, if you were in psychology and you want to make a big sweeping claim that all uh, women act in a certain way, you would need to provide it a citation for that because it's a large claim. Okay. If you modified that claim to say, uh, sometimes women in these specific situations with, under this specific demographic act in this specific way, then you still are going to need to claim, like cite that claim, but at least now you have specified your claim. Um, and so it's easier to provide support for the individual pieces and also easier for the reader to go to your um, support source um, and find what you're looking for. So you want to make those claims specific, um, but and the broader the claim or the more extreme the claim or the more radical the claim, um, more controversial, again, the more citations will be expected of you. The other reason that we cite our resources is to respect the people that did the original research. So if you've spent, you know, three degrees um, working on this doctoral thesis and you've got, done all this work and then so-and-so just pulls it up and pulls a bunch of info from it and hands it in on their own, that's an integrity violation, first of all, but it's also just really disrespectful to the person that worked so hard on gathering that information in the first place and doing that reporting or doing that research um, in the, initially, right? So it is a respect thing. Um, and it also protects you from performing or not performing, from committing any um, integrity violations. So plagiarism, patch writing, um, straight up copying. Um, there's lots of ways that you can violate integrity. Um, especially in an academic sense. And uh, we don't want you to do that, right? You want to be very open and um, front forward facing about where you found your information. Okay, attribution. So I wanna talk about attribution because this is what you use to cite your sources when you're in a non-academic sense. So you're not in academics at all. Attribution is typically used. And you'll also find it in what's called pop academics. Um, so books written by academics, but for the general public to read. So those will still be cited, usually in footnotes, because they don't interfere, right? You're not seeing a bracketed chunk um, in the center of your text or your sentence. Um, there's just a tiny little footnote, and you can check that footnote um, to see where that fact is coming from. Um, attribution is considered an easy reading style. It's considered more casual. You'll see it in journalism and literary nonfiction, often without the supplementary footnotes. Um, in academic stuff, pop academics, you usually will see a combination of attribution and footnote style. So what is an attribution? It is including the citation information in your writing itself. So within the sentences surrounding the information, you put the sources information. So the title, what it is, when it was written, you'll include that in the surrounding sentences, usually over one or two sentences. Um, I have some example phrases for you. So um, these are all really basic, obviously. Um, the most basic attribution, the absolute most basic one is quotation says so-and-so. That's it, says so-and-so is the base attribution. So any um, synonym for says, <laughs> if you think back uh, uh, to you know creative writing in grade seven and they hand you a huge list of synonyms for the word said, um, all of those typically uh, technically can work for attribution. So you've got says, you have according to, you have um, claims, you have studied, you have written by, all of these terms. Um, and then you have kind of options to include the title, the year, or the author um, as necessary. And of course, you can split this over a couple pages, or not pages, a couple sentences. So for instance, you could introduce your source in the first sentence, um, 
this research paper or this, you know, 1998 research paper by such and such at all um, focused on this hypothesis. And then you can expand on what they say, paraphrase the, the thing or quote it. Um, and it's in there in the writing so that it's impossible to miss. And if you're reading the sentences, you'll just see it as part of the writing. Okay. So that's an attribution. Um, again, this is the style that you see in journalism. Um, in journalism, they're just going to tell you what the source is within the paragraph, right? Okay, so some example verbs um, to go with those phrases. Um, again, a lot of these are synonymous for says or for shows, um, and that is the basics. Um, quick note. Fiction, if you're writing about fiction or um, so any fiction, movies, stories, plays, um, any fiction, poetry counts as fiction in this case, um, and so does visual art. Um, so those are referred to in present tense because the idea is that that art exists perpetually. Um, whereas if you're referring to nonfiction and like research sources, um, those will be referred to in past tense because they are completed. They're not continuing. The story doesn't continue and continue. Um, the story isn't always happening. This, you know, they did a thing, it's over. Um, so past tense for nonfiction and present for fiction and art pieces. Where do you put your citation? Okay, so after every bit of information that is not from your own brain. So if it's from the textbook, if it's from course material, if it's from um, wherever, YouTube, Google, Wikipedia, um, you need to cite it. You need to tell the reader, which is me in this case, where you found that information, um, especially if it's a quote. So if it's a direct quotation, yes, 100%, no excuses. You've got to have a citation. If it's a paraphrase, um, you should have a citation there to be safe, um, but it is slightly less of a necessary hammer on the head. I need to see your citation right now. So in text, we have in text citations. What this means is like an attribution, it's in the actual physical text surrounding the fact or the quote that you've put in. Okay. So it's right there on the page as opposed to going to the reference page that you have at the back um, where everything's together. So each one will have an in-text citation. Typically, this is done either in footnotes and attributions, because again, they're less um, invasive to the reading process, um, or in an academic sense, they're done with an in-text citation. For APA, which is what we're gonna be learning, your in-text citation is in brackets, and it's the author's name, comma, the year, and that's it in brackets. And you include that as part of your sentence. Okay, so in-text citation, typically in round brackets, like I've shown you, um, and typically author and, and pe uh, publication year or author and page number, depending on the style. Um, if you're doing large research projects, sometimes it varies a little bit because you might have done some attribution in the sentence and then you can remove parts of the in-text citation. Um, for example, if you included the author's name in the sentence, then you might just put the date in brackets. Um, or if you've referred to the same ref, uh, same source multiple times in a row, then you might be putting IBID, which means same as before, um, or you might just be putting page numbers. So there are variations here, but typically it is surname and the year of publication. That's for APA. Okay. Footnotes, as I said, are non-disruptive. And I've got this lovely little example down the bottom. So you can see how it's in superscript, which is when the script is elevated to the top. Um, same as like this example here, tenth that goes up. <laughs> um, so here is an example footnote. It's just a number in superscript. And then at the bottom of the page, you'll see the number in superscript and the information that goes with it. Um, you can play around with this in Word on the references tab. There is actually a button to insert footnotes and end notes. Footnotes is what you would use for your citations. Um, and notes is other stuff. Um, and uh, yeah, so you can play around in that and see that it will count up the numbers for you, keep track of which one's which. Um, and 
usually it shows in this little section at the bottom that kind of looks like a footer, but it can get quite tall. Um, yeah, play around in Word for that. Uh, footnotes is a very nice uh, setup visually. Um, if you uh, have ever done a Bible study, <laughs> most uh, Bibles and religious texts generally are printed with um, a form of uh, footnotes where, you know, translation um, notes, for instance. So you might be reading through something, see it, something uh, with a little number next to it or a little letter uh, for the footnote. And then you go down to the bottom and it'll say original Greek word such and such or original Hebrew word such and such um, also could be translated as such and such, you know? Um, so those are common places that you would see it. Um, and again, you'll see this in pop academics. Um, so if you've read things like uh, The Secret Life of Trees, that was big a few years ago, that's got footnotes and stuff in there. And then finally, attributions we've discussed, um, that would be embedded around and I have a little example here so I've got according to and then I have the name of the author um, and then I've actually split it over two sentences so I've told my fact which is that it's about reviewing and then I've mentioned the name of the chapter here um, so all sorts of things depending on what you're trying to express you can fit that in um, to the surrounding text okay so these little citations that we've just talked about, the in-text ones and footnotes, they lead your reader to your full citation. So as well as in-text, we also have a reference page, okay? Reference page, citation, and bibliography, they all mean the same thing. So if you've ever done any of those, it's the same idea. Um, it is a page that goes at the end of your work and list out all of your references in full. That's it, that's the whole thing. Um, list out your references in full. So um, you'll alphabetize your references, you'll use a hanging indent. Um, check out all of the examples that I've got on the lab site. I've got a link for you later in this uh, presentation for them. Um, but yeah, depending on the style, you'll find different uh, names for it, but it's all the same thing. Some styles have rules for the way that you format it, you know, the margins, the fonts, everything. Um, if you're doing like an APA essay, then there might be things like um, style guide for how you actually format it. Um, so spelling of uh, words that have multiple spellings, punctuation rules, um, that's called a style guide or a house guide. You find that if you work in publishing, um, but you'll also find that there's literal formatting rules about the size of the margin, which font you can use, what size, how many spaces, what kind of spacing you need for your lines. Um, and that can apply to these. So if you are doing a large research project where the entire piece, um, like the whole essay needs to be formatted in that style, um, then you'll format your citation page within that style as well. If you're just using the citations and you're not doing the rest of it in that style, like what I'm doing here, I'm not, you know, this is, <laughs> doesn't look like a formal style, it's a slideshow, um, but I'm still using my citations. So you've kind of got options there. So these go at the end of your work, it's the last page or pages if you have a longer piece, obviously. Um, so what do we actually use while we are here at uh, Vancouver Career College? We use APA. So APA is the American Psychological Association um, and it is designed for social sciences and research papers um, in the social sciences. So it prioritizes things like when the study was done, right? And um, yeah, so it can be used in all styles of paper, essay, research project generally, um, and APA is in its seventh edition. So if you are looking up style guides online, you wanna look at the seventh edition. I do also have the standard style guides all linked on the citations page of my site. So what's the basics in APA? Like usual, it would be your author, your year of publication, okay? Your title of your work that you're referencing, the publisher name, and then the location of publication or the link. Um, this is the order for APA. Um, and these are the five basic items that you need to have. If you're missing any of them, um, I will kind of talk about that. So if you're missing an author, okay, you're gonna use the associated organization. If you're missing a publication date, you're gonna put ND for no date. We'll talk about this more in a second. So these are the basics. And then I just also wanna point out 
the title of article chapter and then title of book in italics. This is what I was mentioning earlier, where if you have a full work, it's italicized. If it is a short piece of a work, then it is vertical, just normal set. Okay. So here's the formula, okay? Um, and you can copy the formula from here. You can copy it from the APA site. Um, it's also on my site, on the green uh, site, on the citations page. And what I usually do, especially when I'm first learning a new style, is to take the formula, just paste it at the top of my reference page. And then as I go through um, my references and I'm putting them into citation style, um, I can just plug it in to the formula like using Excel or um, algebra. So the first thing you're gonna have is the name. Okay, so you'll do last name and first initial. So not their full first name, just their first initial. If they have a second initial, you'll include that. And if there are other authors or collaborators, this is the time you would put that as well as the role of that person if that is a relevant item. Next, you're gonna have the year of publication. Again, that's the most important thing. If you have a more specific date to give, you can absolutely do that, but year goes first. So it'd be year, comma, whatever other date information you have. Next, you've got your title. Um, and if it is a edition after the first edition, then you'll include that as well. Next, you've got your publisher name. And then finally, you have your location slash link and if relevant, a page number. So what does the in-text one look like? Uh, we kind of went over this. Um, for APA, an in-text reference is simply the surname, comma, publication year, okay, in brackets. So you'll incorporate this into your punctuation for your sentence. Um, so if, you know, this is at the end, the period would go outside of the bracket. If a page number is relevant, you would just put it at the end um, as a comma. Okay. Um, quick reminder for things that you need to cite in text, any direct quotations, any direct uh, paraphrased information, and all major claims. Okay. all major claims. So if it is a claim um, that can't be proven simply by like going outside, like you don't have to show evidence that things like the sky is blue, um, but you have to show evidence for things like, um, I don't know, <laughs> everything else. Um, yeah, if it's not an intuitive, noetic uh, human experience, uh, then you pretty much need to cite it. Um, have a look at the examples and you should get a sense of what things need citations and what don't. Um, if you just know a fact already and you don't have a citation for it and you're worried about that, please just check with me um, and I'll let you know whether it's okay or not. Um, okay, so let's make one. First of all, author's name. So last name, first initial. I will also accept if you put their first name in full, that was the old style uh, for APA and is common in other styles. So I don't mind if you wanna give me their full name. Um, if you can't find the author, use the associated organization. If there's multiple authors, just list them all out. Um, what if the author isn't an author? So this is what I was talking about with the role. If they do something other than just write it out, you're gonna include that. Um, in parentheses after their name. So editor, composer, director, producer, and some of them do have um, preset little um, abbreviations. Publication date. So again, the most important element is the year. Um, if you cannot find the date, this is typical on websites. If you can't find the date for a book, uh, let me know because it should be there. Um, and your book might be one of those stolen ones without a cover page. Um, but it should be there. So if you can't find a date online, uh, ND for no date, but otherwise there should be at minimum a year available for you to uh, list out. Title, we've talked about this. So I've got some examples down here of things that would be, oh, excuse me, wow, I'm tired apparently. So things that would not be italicized, an essay, an article, a chapter, a video, a poem, things that would be magazine, newspaper, the, the full blog name, the, a book, a movie, a collection. Um, so you can see how the smaller version is upright and the longer version is italicized. Sometimes you'll just have one of the titles to list. Sometimes you'll have both. Um, it depends on what you're looking at, right? What uh, assignment you're doing and what source you are looking at. Okay. What if the source isn't written? So this is 
just a quick note that you can use any type of source. It can be a book or an article, something you read, but it can also be movies, videos, lecture notes, um, <laughs> anything, literally anything. So again, on my citation page, I have a booklet there called APA uh, example booklet. Please look through there. It's got examples of all sorts of different types of media and how they can be cited. Something to consider is the formality of your sources and how that relates to your own work, which is going to be its own lecture um, on source integration and evaluation. Um, so source evaluating is to make it very simple, checking that the publisher of that source is legit. So do a quick Google of the publisher, make sure they're not, you know, some weird fringe group publishing stuff, um, that they're legitimate and that they publish things that are respected. If it's a academic piece, you wanna check that it's been peer reviewed. Um, so you wanna Google the author, you know, are they dodgy for instance? Um, sometimes it happens, you know, you read an article, uh, let's say in the newspaper and you're, it's a, an opinion piece and you're like, wow, that's really interesting. But then you look up the author and you realize that they're, you know, actually a very dubious person or they're affiliated with something that you don't agree with and then that changes the way that you're going to see um, their information when you find out what their biases are so you want to look for people's bias actively um, and again the more controversial or stronger your claim is the more you want to um, believe in your sources and believe in the people that made them and that published them and make sure that they are legit, right? That you're not spreading misinformation. You do not need to have formal, peer-reviewed, fancy academic stuff for all your sources, especially um, at career college, right? We're looking for practical, we're looking for functional, we're looking for communicating with the public rather than ivory tower academics. So you can absolutely look at non-peer-reviewed, um, more pop sources, um, Basically, the more formal your research is, the more formal the sources for that research should be. All right, publication location. So if it's a physical item, it will have a physical location that it was printed or minted or whatever else. So this one, um, it says on the Verso page, uh, published by Grey Wolf Press, and it gives me a address in St. Paul, Minnesota. So I know that it was published in Minnesota. Okay. Um, so that's what I would put. I'd put Minnesota and then I would put Grey Wolf Press. So here it would be, yeah, Minnesota Grey Wolf Press. Okay. If it's a website, obviously there's not a physical location for it uh, because it doesn't exist in the physical world. It exists on the web. So you instead put the web location, which would be the URL, the, your uniform resource locator. Um, and if it is a website that updates, um, then you'll also include the time or date that you accessed it, um, usually either with ac accessed from or retrieved from, um, depending on the style for us. Uh, retrieved, then the date, and then from, and then you can include the link. You can also just include the link, um, as I've done here for the textbook. Um, I don't need to say retrieved from because it is a stable item. It doesn't get updated, the textbook, right? So it's a book. And then you put your parts together. So you've got your author, role, date, title, title, edition, media, publisher, location, link. Um, and you can see how that all comes together into a nice APA citation here. Um, and I've done the hanging indent, okay? So when you do your uh, page, finally, your uh, citation page at the end of your work, you want a hanging indent for each one. So it starts on the left and then um, any preceding uh, or succeeding, I should say, lines will be hanging in dents. Okay, some examples. Here's some APA examples. So let's look at and find our pieces. The first thing we're looking for is our authors. And as always, that's going right at the front. So you can see I've got the um, office skills textbook again to be consistent with that one. And for APA, it lists them all out with a nice little ampersand there. Um, I've also cited something from Wikipedia because I just think it's an interesting one. Um, so it's Wikipedia contributors is the uh, author there because it's an open source situation. 
And then Purdue Online Writing Lab is a organization and they are, uh, they don't have individual authors for their pages. Next, we have our year of publication, um, which you can see is right after um, and is in brackets, followed by a period. So I have a year, then I have a date because this updates, right? So a more recent update date. And then I also have this one here, which is a no date because it's just a standard kind of um, semi-stable page and it doesn't tell you the date. Okay. Next, we have our titles. So we have the titles of our um, article and chapter. So you can see in the Wikipedia one, we have our article name, Butterfly, and then it's an encyclopedia. So we have the word in, and then the encyclopedia name. Um, encyclopedias are slightly different than other um, work. Uh, sometimes in a magazine, you might use the word in. Again, just refer to the overall structure um, and the example sheet, and let me know if you have questions about it. We've got publisher name, okay. Um, which you can see is right here, Pearson Education Canada. For the online ones, I don't have a publisher name. I guess Purdue Online Lab could be, or I guess you could say Wikipedia is, um, but they don't ask for it in the same way, okay? And then your location or your link. So you can see that this one, because it is a page that updates, it is including my retrieved and my date and time that I did that in order to access um, this content. So here it is, retrieve, date and time, and then from and the link. If it's not something that updates, it's just the link. All right, for further examples and practice, go to the citations tab of the lab site. And then here are my references. I wasn't able to do the hanging indent um, just because of the way that that works in uh, PowerPoint. Um, but just imagine that these two down here uh, and this one, in fact, have a hanging indent for the second line. Um, and here we go. So these are the things I've looked at. Uh, of course, the APA style guide itself, I've linked for you. Um, and the textbook from Office Skills that I used for most of my examples, the Purdue Writing Lab. Um, I just suggest you go and check that out. <laughs> and then of course the citations page. And I've done some examples here. Um, so hopefully you can use those as well. And that is that, that's my slideshow for you. So I'm going to stop my share and uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. I really hope that this was helpful and clarified for you what a citation is, why we use them, and the basics of how we do that. Um, and then I will be back to talk to you again soon about source integration. So how to put it into your writing and source evaluation. So how to choose your sources and how to um, assess them as valid or as dodgy <laughs> um, and how to just know which sources have good information and how to check that out. Um, so stay tuned for that and I will see you all soon. Um, happy research. Oh, quickly before I go, my top tip <laughs> with uh, doing citations is while you're researching, cite as you go, okay? So when you pull out an article and you're like, ooh, interesting, um, just write the citation out on your reference page, your full citation, and then you have it and you don't have to go back and look for it later. Um, you have the information there. And then if you do include it, any information from that source, you already have that reference ready to go. All right, that's that. I'll see you again soon. And uh, yeah, happy researching. Bye.